We are now on to part two of the Collins, uh, Collins build where I plan on doing the charred handle. Um, so I spared you some of the footage of me just getting it, it seated. Um, right now, I'm very happy with the fit. I don't have a wedge in it uh, there at all yet, but and this is before sanding. Um, prior to sanding, I do plan on, you know, rounding over or chamfering the inside of that eye just so it doesn't kind of bite in nearly as bad and create as much of a shelf, but I'll show you guys the fit kind of before then. So looks super tight there. And as I sand it, that handle will, you know, come just a little bit more proud of that, that, um, that eye. But with this being, with this being a Connecticut pattern, um, there isn't, and this being a house handle, um, there isn't a super ton of extra room um, on that tongue to really drop that head even lower. Um, so by the time the sanding and everything's done, it'll probably come down another, you know, an eighth quarter of an inch. Um, at least that's my guess. So I don't want to drop it too much further now because uh, then I'll run out of room on my shoulder here. Um, I'm happy with how the handle's coming along so far. I have not done any shaping on it. Really, the only shaping I've done is underneath the eye here. I've kind of dropped down that shoulder so it's a nice smooth transition into the side of the uh, side of the handle. Um, one of the things I did recently pick up uh, was this Farrier's Rasp. Um, I know a bunch of other axe guys, uh, you know, have used them and recommended it. I think it was, I was talking with, uh, you know, Ethical Axe on it, and he said he prefers it over the Shinto Rasp. Um, I don't know what kind he uses. This is a Heller Red Tang. Um, but it is super aggressive. Uh, you can remove a lot of wood really quickly with that. Um, I, would, I would definitely say you can remove it a lot quicker than uh, the, the Shinto Rasp, which is both good and bad. Um... Obviously, you know, if you're trying to do some heavy stock removal, that's a great option. If you're trying to have a little bit more of a delicate touch, it can be a little bit trickier. Um, I didn't even use the uh, the coarser side of this rasp uh, yet. I've just used the, you know, the finer side. And that was still removing a lot. Um, but I was able to get a fairly, you know, fine touch with it. And it did help me get this progress done a little bit quicker than with, with just the Shinto. So... I do like it. I think there's a little bit of a learning curve with it, but I'm, I'm excited to keep using it. Uh, other than that, I think it's ready to start getting things set up and uh, shaping the handle. All right. And kind of do a little comparison of where we're at with shaping the handle. Um, so you got the general shape going on. I still got to take a lot more out of this uh, palm swell here where so you still got to take a lot more out of the palm swell where this kind of like sweep happens in here. So taking the, the rasps and kind of scooping out in there scooping out in here so that way when your your hands you know your hands sliding down the handle it really kind of like locks in there just kind of make that nice concave portion so do that otherwise the thickness of the handles coming along pretty good still got a little more to do but yeah, making good progress
So I've got the shape, the handle primarily shaped up. Um, I'm really happy with where it's at. Kind of give a little comparison. I don't have the head fully seated, just kind of slipped on here to, to show you, but um, I'm happy with how I've got the, the back of the kind of like belly dialed in here. I, I like it even more than, I'm, than I have got it on the, uh, the Plum Connecticut. I've got it blended down a little bit more, a little bit more pronounced of a swoop. Um, this one here, pretty much identical. I'll get it tuned up a little bit once I uh, take the sander to it, but overall, I'm pretty happy with the progress. Um, still see there's some you know marks in it from the you know from the files and rafts, but happy with how it's looking. Um, feels really good in the hand, so that's good. I like it. So now I'm at the point where, since I've never burned a whole handle like this before, I'm not quite sure the order of operations that I'm going to take. Um, I think what I'm going to do is sand it first, just do like the normal handle uh, prep, probably just skip burnishing. Um, so I'll, you know, sand it down with 100, then 220, um, make sure everything's looking good, uh, and then I'll probably burn it, you know, char it. Um, try to just do like a light enough touch where I get the darkness but not heat the handle through as much as possible. That's my theory. I don't know if I'll even be able to do that. but So I'll get it sanded up and uh, see where we get to. I'll come back when uh, done sanding and ready to start burning. Like I said before, I've never really done this finish on a large handle before. Um, so I'm not quite sure what I'm getting into. I've got it all shaped up. Got the you know measurement for depth for the kerf all uh, measured out. Roughly you know two thirds, maybe a little more of the way down the tang or where the the head's actually going to sit. Um, happy with how the handle came out. Got it all sanded up, sanded all the way up to a two twenty finish. Um, happy with how the uh, scroll end came out. I'm never, not really sure how how to approach that transition, you know, between this handle and the, the, the end. Because, you know, when you're lighting wood, it wants to burn way more readily. So I'll probably try to just slowly work up to it just so I don't really lose that line. But we'll see how it goes. Um, the rest of the handle has pretty smooth transitions all over. So I'm just trying to get like a, a dark char on it. Hopefully we'll be able to do that and see how it goes. Might fail miserably, but <laughs> whatever. It is just a handle. Well, there it is. <laughs> it's not quite as dark as I had hoped, but maybe it'll uh, darken up a little bit as, you know, add, darken up a little bit as I uh, kind of burnish it a little bit and oil it. And I, it does look kind of cool. Um, well, this whole project is kind of an experiment, just kind of see how it turned out, but I don't know yet. I don't know if it'll come out as even as I want. Um, it seems like there's some spots where the wood, for whatever reason, just kind of took some of the char a little darker than, than others. Just a little bit, a few minutes. It's really cold out in the shop, so it shouldn't take long. Um, and then we'll hit it with the, uh, the Brillo pad and see if the that kind of finish evens out a little bit. All right, kind of get brought you back in on a little wider angle lens. Uh, hopefully you guys can see it all right still. But, uh, yeah, it's, no, it's only been a, no, a minute or so, but it's already kind of, kind of just barely warmed to the touch. So scuff it up and kind of knock off some of that extra char, um, see what the finish below kind of comes out as.
All right, so here it is after the char. Um, burnishing it with that, uh, it's just a like, brown or maroon colored uh, steel wool. Really evened it out a lot. I, I like it a lot now. Um, it was a little patchy from the start, uh, but like I said, burnishing that really evened it out nicely. It's not black, it's just like a super, super dark chocolatey color right now. Um, the camera looks like it's picking it up as black, but in, in person it's just really, really dark kind of a chocolate color. Um, I think it will probably go black once it's oiled though, so pretty much exactly what I'm looking for. Um, I didn't really get any heat heat uh, or stress cracks like I was, I was kind of nervous about, which is really good. Happy about that. Um, the only place that kind of happened was right at the very end here on the palm sweat or the scroll end, which honestly, if all the places for it to happen, that's that's not bad. Um, the kerf opened up a lot when I. Uh, when I, uh, you know, charred it. I did taper it to start, but this, um, probably gonna have to throw a clamp on it to get it back inside the eye, because it did open a lot uh, under the, that heat, so. Yeah, I, th I think this is pretty good. I'll let it finish kind of cooling down the rest of the way. I'll wipe this, wipe this down a little bit just to get some of the loose ash off, but uh, yeah, I like it. We'll uh, get a wedge fitted up and Get it home.